order to consider an application completely decentralized, it has to be distributed across multiple locations without any central authority controlling the operational aspect. How can we make the web front end also decentralized? Any web development frameworks such as React, Next.js, Angular, Vue, and others will require a server, a machine that is running that as a process. And it's going to allow users to listen, reach the application over a particular port. But the problem is when we are looking to build an application that is fully decentralized, all the aspects of that application must reside in a decentralized location. I am going to be showing you how are we migrating a Next.js project straight to static HTML. There's not going to be any server whatsoever required. All we have to do is that we have to store all the static HTML files for our decentralized application in IPFS. And all the user has to do is reach the IPFS URL and boom, they're going to have the application open. Because most of the applications that will run in a decentralized Web3 ecosystem are going to be client rendered. And that allows me to what? To just send the files to the user. The browser is just going to open that index HTML. And inside that index HTML, we are building the entire structure of the web page. So when the user opens that page, all they're basically doing is fetching the index HTML file. And inside the index HTML file, they are going to be invoking the scripts that are also going to be stored on the same folder as the index.html. That's it. Another item that we have to take care of is all the dependencies that we have to migrate from the local server instance, the local Next.js project to a static site. Remember, there's no NPM install, which means that I cannot install ethers. IPFS is only going to let us store those files. It's not going to let us install modules in the static site, but there's an answer for that. What we can do is we can invoke a CDN repository that is going to fetch those files live as the user is loading the page. It's just going to load them in runtime. Very clever. So now I don't need to install any server. I don't need to run any framework on a dedicated server, which means that I no longer have to pay hosting fees. All I have to do is I have to make sure all my JavaScript functions are migrated into a static HTML site. And we have to make sure that they are rendered or they are processed in a sequential order. The sequence here is extremely important because we probably need a dependency that should load before a function that is going to depend on that particular module that we have to have already installed or else the page is going to complain saying that you don't have X module. So we have to make sure that we have those dependencies, anything that is dependent upon every single function that we are going to be rendering live on the user or the client session, we have to make sure that we place them in a sequential order. At the end, it will give you a 100% decentralized Web3 application. With IPFS, I am going to obtain a CID. Once I obtain that CID, I know for a fact that the project or the static site has been stored in IPFS. All I'm going to be doing after it's just pointing any domain record that I purchased to that URL. So if I'm storing my site in IPFS, I am going to be providing the path to that site to my record. So let's say my app.io, I will go into the name register that is hosting or holding onto that name record. I will be the owner of that record. I'll go there, I'll log in, and I will just forward that request to IPFS to the CID that I have the application. Users type my app.io, and we should be able to see the site loading. No server required, completely free, but there's one caveat. IPFS requires you to pin those files. So in order for IPFS to lower the amount of data that is stored in that blockchain and also keep consistency across all the data that is decentralized, they want to make sure that there's a local nodes helping host the IPFS file. So if I am going to be hosting my platform, my static site in IPFS, I got to make sure that either I subscribe to an IPFS pin service or I can and host my own IPFS node and make sure that I'm locally pinning those files. That's one of two methods that you have available. If you don't pin your files, it will definitely replicate once you upload it to IPFS. It's going to take a bit. It's going to replicate, but at some point, IPFS is going to do garbage collection and is going to purge files that are not pinned to a node. That's part of the game, okay? Else, IPFS is just going to grow with a bunch of garbage files and the platform is not going to be sustainable. It's going to be an amazing journey. You are going to learn how to write front ends using strictly JavaScript. We are going to be using JavaScript and document object model. 
DOM manipulation. Hold on, what is JavaScript DOM manipulation? In essence, we are building HTML objects by invoking the document object model. In a nutshell, it's going to allow me to interact with HTML from an object perspective, strictly using JavaScript. Ready? Let's go ahead and let's move from Next.js to decentralized web. Let's do it. <laughs> 